Hi everybody and welcome back to the channel and welcome back to another course vlog. This time as you saw it's the back nine out at the La Quinta Resorts mountain course. Gosh is this place an absolute beauty. Pete Dye just built so many golf holes right up into this mountain. Hole after hole after hole and this back nine features his signature island green this time built right into the side of the mountain. But starting here on the 10th hole, this mid-sized par four kind of tests your target golf skills. You can see the fairway is split into two sections, the upper left and the lower right. You really do want to be on the upper left plateau. You're going to have a better view down into this green. Got to carry this little bit of a chasm and that bunker down in front into a pretty mid-sized green and it's two tiers, that bottom right front and a upper left back. As with most par fours under 400 yards, I like to take my two iron off the tee, smoke that thing about 260 yards down the fairway and left myself a good gap wedge here into the back flag. I was really maxing out that gap wedge there at the 120 mark and hit the ridge and came all the way back down to the front of the green. I was able to lag this putt up nice and close here to about three feet and tap in the par putt, go on to the 11th hole. Now here number 11 is another par four, this one playing right on about 400 yards. You gotta avoid that giant waste bunker. As you see, the car path goes right through it. It's not gonna give you a good lie and there is a little severe slopes down into it. Look at the staircases down into it on the left and a pretty uh, tall wooden, I mean, a wooden wall there on the left-hand side as well. Hey, what are we worrying about the bunker? Let's hit it out in the middle of the fairway. Leave yourself a mid-iron into the green and well, got a bunker on the left to deal with and a bunker on the right to deal with there into the green. This again was a comfy two iron for me off the tee, but I was a little bit Yankee off the tee as well. And well, I was talking about that chasm because I decided to visit it. There's no matter though. Take an extra club, my nine iron goes about 160 yards normally and swung easy with it from the 140 number. Middle of the green was all I needed to worry about. Hopefully lag down the birdie putt into the hole and you know what, it's okay though. Gonna tap it in here from underneath the camera, make my easy four, a little lip in four there, and we're on to another par four with another car path going right through a bunker. Now this one you gotta squeeze in between those two fairway bunkers. It is shorter enough though that I don't need to take a driver off the tee. It is, makes the fairway a little bit wider than especially where the car path really narrows in there. Water off the side really isn't much in play on the hole, really more of an aesthetic, especially there with the Homes in the background, and as you see, we are starting to climb right towards the mountain. Sooner or later, we'll be right next to it. I uh, learned my lesson off that last hole and really was able to correct it and smash that two iron right down the middle, give myself another comfy gap wedge into this pin, middle pit this time. Was able to hit another one on the green and give myself another look at birdie. It's about 25 or 30 feet away, but hey, sometimes these can roll in. Lippy, 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 that's not what we like to see. But another effort free tap in par is not too bad, keeping us at one over par for the day. Even par here on the back nine, and we're facing the first par three on the back nine. A little longer and a touch uphill there at 193 yards. I'm going to be facing a middle right hand flag and there's plenty of trouble and plenty of little dunes out there to catch an errant shot. Oh, right at the edge of the. Is that a bunker? Right at the edge of the bunker is correct, Fernando. Standing in it had to choke way down on my sand wedge. Nice touch. Sit a little bit. Yeah, that's just 
Uh, I mean, it was nothing but slope there, feeding away from the ball. Really tough to stop it next to the hole. Even with the greens running a little bit slower than they're going to run most of the time during the winter, I did play this course out in the summertime. That's why the course looks a little bit more burnt out. Now here is where the course turns into the mountain and you're all alone. This 14th hole has got another plateaued fairway. You need to be up on the right hand side to have a view of the hole. The hole is also elevated from the, from the fairway. So you're not going to be able to see the surface of the green up there. Oh boy, it is sitting up in the mountain. Absolutely gorgeous. Uh, the two iron was really working for me today. No reason to take the driver on this hole. Smashing two iron up to that top tier fairway and gonna leave myself another comfy gap wedge here into this hole. Let's hit one close and make a bird. Two shots just the way I wanted it. Let's cap it off with a beautiful bird. Oh, no, no. <sighs> the putting today has been my nemesis. Uh, these greens are running a little funky out here in the summer. Man, they run smooth during the wintertime. I do like it. Now, this par 5 15th hole is a carbon copy clone of number 4, but it wraps the other way around. A dog leg right around the corner of the mountain, and you got a green that's completely encapsulated with that trap. Oh boy, it's all you got off the tee, and a test of precision into that green. First time I had to hit the driver for a while, but the swing was working. 100% confidence in the shot, and I put it right down Main Street. Did not have a 100% confidence in that six iron. I thought it was gonna fly a little bit long, so I took a little bit off of it theoretically, but you know what? In the end, I just got late on it and pushed it off to the right, ended up in the bunker. But you know what? It's a par five, we're here in two. Let's splash it out. And let's get up and down for our birdie, huh? Okay, it's close enough. What is it, 12 feet there? Makeable. Oh, it's makeable if you hit it. You got to hit the putt and get it there. It is time for the signature hole where we are teeing off from this extra little tee box up on this little mountain. Take note of where that is in relation to this beautiful island green sitting here on the mountainside. 167 yards on a straight line from that upper tee, it only plays about 150 with the slope. If you get a chance to get out here, make sure you take the little climb up there. It is absolutely worth the view. A view as pretty as this calls for a shot just as pretty. Tried my best and that green is just a little baby sliver down there and it hung up on the edge here on the fringe. Thought maybe I can roll one in from the fringe cause you know, I wasn't rolling anything in from the green but hey, it's just another tap in par and we're on to the 17th hole. The last hole you're gonna see up against the mountain and the last hole you're gonna see with one of those giant waste bunkers replacing the car path. Snake it on down there between that bunker and the mountain edge and you'll have another green sitting right up against the cliffside with a couple more pot bunkers protecting the front. 
This tee shot is blind from these tees back here. You just got a little finger of the fairway that you can see, and you got to hit it over the edge of the mountain there and just hope you picked your line perfectly. I actually thought I pushed it a little bit, but it was down in the little depression here on the right side of the fairway. Had enough that I can take a decent pitching wedge into this front flag, was trying to really flight it and get the distance correct because I needed to make a birdie. I wanted to make a birdie. Birdie, 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 that's all we like to make. Gotta get this score back down to even par, but yeah, that's just gonna be the story of the day. Slow weird greens and you're not gonna be able to hit the putt. You know, one more reveal here shows the 18th hole hugging the left-hand side of the property here. Takes you back in between the homes and the driving range. It's a shorter par five and there is a decent amount of trouble off the tee box. It's a kind of a shoot of a tee box there. And you're just staring at those three little pot bunkers. Another bunker protects the second shot if you want to lay up. And then, what is it, about nine or ten bunkers down there is surrounding the green. I mean, why not? Might as well just give it all you got with this drive. Send it one last time. Nail! Look at that thing. That thing's still up in the air. That qualifies as all I got, and unfortunately, it didn't quite turn over the way I wanted it. It was up in the lip of one of these pot bunkers. I just made sure that I had enough club to get it over the lip in front of me, which was a six iron. And you know, six iron was also enough club that if I caught the ball perfect, it would have got there. But caught a little fat, left it short of the green. Here, a nice 60 yards to the hole and was able to play a little flighted wedge down in there. Well, we are just about done out here. And uh, hey, I want to give a shout out to my boys over here, the Desert Golfer and Double Dog Leg Golf. Check both them out. I'll keep the, put their links down in the description below. Really was a great time playing out here with Fernando and Chris. Do make sure you check out their channels. There's been a ton of content that we've created together from all different courses around the Southern California area. Unfortunately, my last birdie attempt at the back nine fell short once again, and I had another effort-free tap-in par. One bogey on the back and eight pars. Hey, that's not too bad for a nice two-over par, 74. I do appreciate you all for joining us today. Please smash that like button down below, and don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. I'd love to see you back here again soon. Thanks again for watching. Later.